actually. And I am Irish. So there's really no rush that Woody felt like he had to do. Um, and in doing so, he awakens the dragon, which is the, the cat of the, of the antique store. They finally make it to this club that's inside of a, a jukebox? Is it a jukebox? What was it? A pinball machine. A pinball machine. Okay. I had no idea what that's about. Uh, it was inside of a pinball machine, and inside there was Tentoy. And that that made my heart smile. As a, as a Pixar fan, I'm so glad they did that. Mm -hmm. Tin Toy is the the the. I guess he was a bouncer. He was he was the the little tin toy that had the drum and the. Uh, and the oh yeah, I remember that. He yeah. was the the one man band. Thing. Yeah, he, he yeah. was in the short. Yeah, yeah. That was him. Um, I was so happy to see him. Canada's. Best stuntman, voiced by Keanu Reeves, uh, everybody's favorite uh, nice man of Hollywood at the moment. Uh, and for a guy who usually didn't, who in his early movie of the year didn't have many speaking lines, he had a lot in this one. And he nailed it. He did a really good job in this one. Um, and so you come to find out that Duke Kaboom has a tragic backstory. And he grew up in, well, he didn't grow up. He had a kid who saw a commercial of his action figure and thought it could do what was in the commercial. And that's usually not how commercials work. Some things are traumatized. You know, so you could go on the bike set toy, but that's every toy commercial. Mm -hmm. That's every toy. This commercial. is true because even in Buzz Lightyear's toy commercial, they had at the bottom toy does not fly, uh, <laughs> yeah. even though it was advertised flying. So yeah, every toy commercial is is, is dramatized. So you could go and be like, ooh, I want this toy to be the Duke Boom that he is now, and to. Basically to embrace who he is right now and not worry about what happened in the past. And while when he does that, Woody also takes that to heart and um, it helps him deal with his own feelings of kind of being abandoned, even though, I mean, He's still one of Bonnie's toys. He's not the favorite. He doesn't get played. He doesn't get played with anymore, and that's kind of his own like emotional crisis. Uh, Duke Boone and Woody are about to make the jump. They successfully make the jump. Well, no, they don't make the jump because in the midst of the runway. Um, Duke Kaboom starts having uh, a flashback moment of his kid and starts having second thoughts and freaks out, causing him to actually lose some momentum because he hits um, both sides of the, the runway. So when they are finally in, in midair, Woody has to jump off the bike to actually make the rest of the way to the cabin. Right. To a cabinet, sorry. And attached to Woody is a string so that Bo can swing across. It's also meant for Buzz to pull him across after the mission is done. Um, they find Forky. He was inside of a box inside of the cabinet because him and Gabby Gabby were playing hide and seek. It wasn't until they finally get Forky that one of the ventriloquist dummies actually tear a hole in his back by pulling it 
No. That's not what happened. What happened was Bugs was starting to pull him back out and one of the dummies got a hold of his pull string and they were pulling opposite ways which was making his voice box come out. Um, but the thing that Gabby Gabby needs from his voice box is the actual box because her record is fine. Um, so you, you just see part of your, your childhood friend coming out of him and it's just, it, it kind of gets to you a little bit. He gives her the voice box. They have the whole interaction with Harmony and Gabby Gabby and then he and she just rolls over in the box and feels defeated and Woody goes to talk to her and he comforts her and he doesn't and she was like you can take your voice box back this was my one chance and it's over and he convinces her to come with them and to help her find a kid. Mm -hmm. Maybe Harmony wasn't your kid, but they're out there. Right. Gabby Gabby decides to look down inside of the carnival and or the festival and see a lost child. And took it upon herself to try to comfort said child. And Woody was asking her, are you sure about this? Do you, are you sure you want to go try to be with this kid? And she's like, yes, I'm sure. So they make their way down and uh, Gabby Gabby sits in front of, uh, sits in front of some hay. The little crying girl actually goes over to Gabby Gabby, picks her up and says, are you lost too? I will help you. And it gave the, the little crying girl courage to actually go and ask a security guard for help. Yeah, that was... That just so happened to be walking by, by right. you know, all ex machina-like and whatnot, you know, for plot's sake. Um, right. And... She ends up finding her, her parents and tells her parents, they're like, I found this doll who pretty much helped me. And it pretty much gives you, it's pretty much the end of Gabby Gabby's story for this entire movie because you see her go off with a child, you see her being loved, you see her um, finally getting what she wants without even having to have that voice box that she wanted so badly. Um, all she really needed was just to be herself and be there for that child because right. her being there was enough, mm -hmm. which is something that you see with pretty much all of these toys. Um, it's like, you know, sometimes Buzz would have his his button press so he could say something and sometimes he'll have his wings expand and sometimes he doesn't because the thing that mostly the kid does is just play with the actual figure of the toy itself. Um, so with the Gabby Gabby story closed, so they make their way back to the carousel by basically taking over the RV. Yeah, they um, do. There's a unicorn that wants the dad to go to jail for some reason. Yeah, this unicorn. He was very obsessed with that. I don't know why. He's in for sending the dad to jail. There's, <laughs> they never say why he wants him to go to jail. But it's like every like, option was we could send the dad to jail. But he, and he kind of reminds me of, um, is the unicorn's name Kathy from that show? That HBO show? HBO show. Is oh, that? Happy from uh, Sci Fi. Yeah. The one voiced by um, Pat Oswald. Yeah, he reminds me, me of him. Oh, well, I mean, it could be. Could it's be him. like. If so, that's hilarious. It's. 
Um, he, he does kind of remind you of Happy after, but it's not really a PG show, so I can't really be talking about that. So really, um, but watch it if if you're old enough. If you're old it, enough to watch it, watch it. it. It's a it's it's a guilty pleasure type of show. Yeah. Um, Mature audiences only. Right. So they they take over the RV, which was a rental, which was mentioned a lot of times. Right. And surprisingly, the Pizza Planet truck wasn't in there. At least I didn't see it. It was probably on the highway somewhere. Um. They finally get back to the carousel. They let open the what is that thing called on the side of the RV? The awning. The awning. They let right. the awning towards the uh, carousel so everybody can. Meet up and Bo uh, starts to say her goodbyes again to Woody. Right. And Buzz told Woody that she's gonna be okay. Right. Because he could tell that he was having a hard time Deciding. leave leaving um, Bo again. And by she, Buzz meant. Bonnie. Bonnie's right. gotta be okay. And this is pretty much all Woody needed to hear to know that he could stay with Bo and be a found lost toy. Um, lost because, you know, he doesn't have a kid, but found because he found himself. Yeah, he found a new purpose. Yeah, he found a new purpose in life. Right. So at the top of the carousel where where Woody and Bo is, you see the rest of the gang just drives away to go on this road trip that they're supposed to still have, apparently. Yeah, but they all come up to say their goodbyes. Right, they all come up to say their goodbyes. And um, Jesse hugs him. Bullseye licks him. Then Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, Rex, Slink, they all come to hug him. Uh, Trixie was in there as well. Um, for anybody that don't know who Trixie is, he's the Triceratops in there. Right. Um, voiced by the lady who does Mabel from Gravity Falls. I can't remember her name though. Oh, yeah. Um, but. And then the cowboy and the space ranger give one final hug, and I now understand why Tom Hanks and Tim Allen cried after watching this movie. Um, Because you basically see the two who had a friend in each other say goodbye. Right. It was really and emotional. It, it hits you. It really yeah, does. Yeah. I, I had a tear or two. I was like, no. Nope, this is true. She nope. did. I, I looked over and she was. Well, one uh, time, uh, something uh, was in my eye. Uh, just, uh, God. No, one time. Uh, oh, something's in my eye. Uh, I actually had something <laughs> in my eye and it was kind uh, of annoying. Uh, and then. In my eye. The second time, I'm not crying. Like, you cried. It was it was an actual <laughs> it was an actual tear. I was like, oh, you got me. But the first time, it was actually something in my eye. I'm not crying. You're crying. Um. So you know, it, it the the cowboy and the space ranger share their hug, and that was it. Um. The RV leaves. Woody stays with Bo. And it, it it doesn't really sink in until they're out of view. Like, once the RV is out of view, you really, it's like, so this is actually it. They, they're actually gone without Woody. Like, the gang is no longer together. If this is the final Toy Story movie, bravo. You ended it in a very, honestly, I I really couldn't see another way of ending 
this franchise. Yeah. And like Woody, when he watches them drive off, he finds new purpose. And his new purpose is not to be a kid's toy, but to help other toys find kids. And during these mid credit scenes, you see him doing just that. Right. While the guy who's supposed to be over the midway game has his headphones on because he doesn't really think anybody's going to win anything. Like, during the whole time, Duck and Bunny are, like, behind some of the, the cutouts that you can't really see. Yeah. So, the kids are shooting, shooting. And, yeah, cause they're, and they're missing, but Duck and Bunny would, like, kick the... The, the, tar- the target over right. and be a ding and then there's like either Bo or Woody down at the bottom they just toss the toy over <laughs> over the counter and the kids are just grabbing it yeah. without even thinking twice about it. like where's this toy coming from if yeah, the guys just right there, they just grab it and run running. right they they grab the toy and run and they clean him out just that's just it yeah. Um, rating zero out of ten. What would you give this movie? Um, I would give it a ten just for sentimental reasons, because we've grown up with this story. Okay. And also, it's it was shot beautifully. There's no point in the movie where you like this doesn't make sense. Like, you can follow along. There's never a part where you're like... This feels out of place. Yeah, there's there's never a time. It's always easy to follow. And it's emotional without being, hey, cry. Or <laughs> now it's time to laugh. It's not forceful. It's, it was beautifully done. I would say go and see the movie. Especially if you've gr- grown up with the movies. If you've been there since 95, you would definitely enjoy this movie. Okay. Um. <laughs> I remember when it came out. I think I went to the movies to see it. I think I did. I saw it on VHS. That was the first time I saw this movie. I did not go to the movie theater to see this movie. That I can think of. It came out when I was five. So I don't think I went to go see this movie. I think I did. Um, me personally I would give the movie a 10 as well but not for sentimental reasons I mean yes I grew up with the characters I love the characters but I feel as though that this particular movie was one of Pixar's greatest works and that says a lot because Pixar has a huge catalog of great movies. Right. But the thing about Pixar, they get better with every movie. They do. Um, like, yeah, they have, like, a good dinosaur in there every once in a while where it's, like, it's enjoyable, but it wouldn't be considered one of the best works. But then you get something like Toy Story 4 or Up or Cars or something like that. And it just makes you go, this company, every time they bring out something, it's mostly worth watching. Um, But as far as like cinematography and uh, the way the director handled it, the way Randy Newman composed it, it was just... uh, The characters, none of the characters felt flat. Right. Even though some of them didn't talk. Right. They didn't feel flat. But yeah, she gives it a 10. I give it a 10. It's definitely a must-see movie of the year. I will definitely watch it. Along with John Wick. uh, We're not talking about John Wick right now. I'm just saying, it's it's one of those movies that you should go see this year. It's definitely one of those movies. If you're a Keanu Reeves fan, Go see this movie. If you're a Toy Story fan, go, go see, see this movie. movie. If you want to go to the movies, go see this movie. <laughs> if you like Tim Allen, go see this movie. If you like John Cus- uh John John Cus- Cusack, Cusack, Cusack. I'm so sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. 
If you Joan like, Kusha? if you like that dude, if it's you a like, lady. she voiced uh, Jesse. Okay, if you like her, go see this movie. <laughs> if you like Tom you, Hanks, Tom if Hanks you like Tom Hanks, go see this movie. If you like if, Jordan Peele and Keegan Michael Key, go see this movie because they're yeah. pretty hilarious in this movie. Yeah. If you like ventriloquist, don't go see this movie too. Cause they were Who great. likes ventriloquist? Uh, I like a ventriloquist. I think Jeff Dunham is pretty great. <laughs> um. Yeah, really silent. It's kind of cool. But whatever. But remember, yeah. everybody. Love is not a losing game. As long as you have the right player too. Choose, Choose wisely. wisely. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, I see it. I see it. It's it's there. Don't know why, but it's there.